Hello and welcome back to the Winning Agendas coverage of the online Twilight Struggle League 2023. My name is Jesse Muleman Marshall. We've got another game here as the USSR. Hopefully it goes a little bit better than the last one. I've got a morning game here, which is a nice change from playing at night time. Often because I am in Australia, I tend to have to play against European players and American players either early in the morning or late at night. But uh, at the moment it is 11 a.m., which is a much nicer time to be playing. Uh, okay, so we've got NATO Marshall Plan, which we can play potentially in that order with your intervention. So it's a pretty nice hand. Uh, blockade, we can, we're probably going to leave in the deck. Um, no red, we might try in space. Vietnam Revolts will be our headline. So then I'm happy to set up like that. Uh, headline of Vietnam Revolts on turn one is pretty low risk play in a lot of ways, uh, in that you can get into the important Asia region, um, sorry, Southeast Asia region, or if it gets defected, you don't really care because it's just kind of a two-up card and it's not the most powerful card to play in an action round. Um, the only exception is if we're playing to lower DEFCON and then, you know, play Vietnam Revolts later in the turn, action round five or six, but uh, I still don't love that necessarily. Although it does, that is a, you know, an interesting play in that it lets you um, make a little bit more use of your four ups as coups if you want. I think here, Headline Vietnam, Spread to Thailand and then Coup Iran is probably okay. Um, yeah, let's go with that. And, and if it gets defectors, then we just Coup Iran and that's okay. Five year plan, that is interesting. Well, we don't really mind losing that, I have to say. Yeah, it's an interesting headline because the five year plan is one of the few, or you know, one of the safe USA plays in the early war. Um, so here there's an interesting choice of, we do lose, one thing the five year plan does is it does mean we can't use your intervention on Marshall plan, which is actually kind of annoying because um, we've got to have six plays. Uh, so we've got to decide what we want to do with the, the Marshall plan, whether we, want, whether we want to let them have it, which we might do. Um, so one thing we can do, uh, there are lots of things we can do here, obviously we can, we're not going to just leave Vietnam cooable. We can't degrade DEFCON twice this action round. So we're probably going to play NATO. Uh, we're probably going to go two at least in Thailand. Unlikely to go into Laos straight away with DEFCON high. Um, the question is whether we put another one in Thailand now, whether we say put one into West Germany to threaten France, which is, you know, with a reasonably ops rich hand, not a bad thing to do, uh, but we did lose a few of our effective ops uh, if we want to attack Europe, but through the, the Marshall plan costing us an action round, if we want to play it. Um, so I'm a little bit less inclined to do that. I don't mind one into South Korea. Um, though again, you know, we don't have any particularly good high ops plays here. We can play Truman. So Truman being playable means that jamming into West Germany is not such a good option. Um, So I think we'll go one more into Thailand and one into South Korea, probably. Yeah, I think three Thailand and then the one in South Korea is the way to go. We could have taken uh, Lebanon as well there since obviously we've got other non-battleground coup targets potentially coming up this turn for them, but I think one into Israel probably would have been better. And then heading across to Egypt and Libya, if we were going to make a move in the Middle East. But I do, I do think we are probably going to give up on the action round here using this UN intervention. I think it's probably better because we do want to space no out anyway. We don't want to hold that over to next turn. So I think just having a blank action round is okay. All right, so Warsaw, one, two. Do we want to, we don't want to put them into the non-battlegrounds because of Truman, unless we want to take Austria with the last, with the influence from Truman Doctrine. 
which I don't know how I feel about that. So that would look like this probably. And then we're committing to using the one from Truman Doctrine in Austria. Hmm. Placing it to Austria is pretty bad. Retaining Italy adjacency, I suppose, is somewhat good. But we're very unlikely to coup there. Although they don't have Italy adjacency, so it is a sort of UN intervention martial coup. Italy is still an open play. We do have to roll a four plus to have a positive effect, obviously. Uh, I think we're more likely to coup Iran this turn. Yeah, I think... We'll probably just go one, two, three, four, five is just better use of that influence. Mostly because it frees up that Truman Doctrine influence. So is this going to be a coup? No, influence placement. Two Pakistan, one Malaysia, okay. Uh, so, I think we're happy to coup Iran here. Uh, we'll play events, coup Iran. And that is good. All right, so uh, the reason we don't coup Pakistan there is we don't want to just fall into an IP war trap, um, leaving them with Iran and them flipping back Pakistan with IP war and us being down UN intervention martial plan since that's our big play for the turn. And we're giving up an action round to do it basically. Not such a good outcome. Uh, we do still have the option of not giving up an action round and killing with the China card if they don't degrade DEFCON here. Or just playing the China card. Um, playing China to take South Korea, not a bad uh, option. Uh, so it could be like, take South Korea, place one in Pakistan, for example. Uh, but obviously forking over the China card in the early war is just never really where you want to be at. Uh, so they're cooing Thailand. A small success, but that is great because it just opens up our the rest of our turn for us. So I'm super happy with that. Um, so probably not going to play China. We, so we want to go to space. We might want to try and take South Korea. We probably want to take Middle East domination by going into Syria. Uh, so we might not have the ops to do the South Korea play this turn, which is okay. Um, we can leave DEFCON at three for now. And then it goes up to four and we can coup Pakistan next turn if we want. Uh, otherwise we can degrade DEFCON in the last action round by cooing Panama with Truman Doctrine, for example, if we want to. Uh, in our last action round anyway. Uh, so we'll place, I think, we do want to probably overprotect Thailand if we are going to give up an action round. I think I think we're actually going to play the China card though here this turn. I think this is the right kind of game situation to play the China card on turn one, which I don't like doing as the USSR, but I think if it solidifies Asia for us this well, then I think it's worth it. So it would be like one, two, three, four, five. Um, which is going to make Southeast Asia really strong for us um, and make it hard for them to get us out of Thailand. So yeah, I'm happy with this. So we can go Arab-Israeli war either into Indonesia and Burma or maybe into Thailand. We'll need to go into Thailand because we give them the China card, so we need to overprotect. Um, and then we're going to want to coup Panama to degrade DEFCON so that they don't get a coup next turn, I think. Yeah, I think it was important just not to give up the um, the action round here and just keep up the pressure with the access we had. Uh, okay, so one, two, three, four. I think I will go Bulgaria. One, two, three, four. Um, just because then there's no particularly good target for them to take with Truman Doctrine. If we put extra influence into one of the countries we've already got influence that they just take out of that country, so it's not particularly useful. 
I guess we could have put into both Austria and Yugoslavia, but that's all right. So we've got all the influence available to de-Stalinization if we happen to draw that next turn. So no, no scoring cards from either player on turn one. Interesting. So India, Indonesia, Egypt, fair enough. Um, so we'll go uh, overprotect here and then I think we'll probably take, we could take Lebanon, but I think we'd rather coup first. So maybe we just do that. Maybe we trigger event. And then I think we'll coup Egypt because we're happy to just coup Panama next turn. But if we coup Egypt, it might keep them out of Libya. So not a good roll, but now we can go our next AR into Lebanon and Thailand, I think is probably the play. So they've had a really high ops hand. Um, that makes you know all threes and fours, which is rough for us in terms of scoring. All right. So I think this is the only way we dominate Asia this action round, but we don't really want to do that. So we'll go one. They're going to get to do Asia scoring for only one to us if they have Asia scoring here, which it looks like they might. Interesting they took Burma rather than India. So that was a glitch. Tarn was still showing three. Uh, so I think we'll go one, one, there we go. So we're kind of threatening them if they play Asia scoring, then if we have Middle East scoring, we get to score it for six points. So we're asking them to respond there. And then we'll probably just space. And they're at AR6. So they get away with it either way. The other option we had this turn was to do an intervention no rat, obviously, um, and let them have Marshall plan, but I'm not super keen on that. All right, so Suez comes out, another three. So yeah, very high ups hand from them. So I'm pretty pleased with how our hand has worked out, considering that. Um, giving them the China card means that, you know, it's obviously they have more power in Asia next turn, but I think we utilized it reasonably well with taking South Korea. Um, but it also means that they can potentially hold something more easily through the following turn, but that's okay. All right, we hit the space race, which I'm happy about. And then do they have a scoring card, either Middle East or Asia? They have Asia. All right, so we get a point. So not the greatest start given how many more ops they had than us, but that was okay. I think we made use of what we could there. Um, so we can headline De Gaulle with the intention of taking um, France AR1. We give up the coup but um, we get France and then what do we do in the Middle East? So we go like to France, to Iraq after that. I think it's it's worth the gambit. Very, very high chance that they have defectors now, um, but I think it's our best headline anyway. All right, containment. So yeah, this, this could work out okay for us. It does mean they get to get a better coup. Um, we do give them Japan, but yeah, that's okay. So we go like one, two, three, four. And they get to coup us in Iran but we're now dominating Middle East and we can dominate Europe.
So I think that's the best way to go. Well, that's the most aggressive play anyway. So if they have Europe scoring, there's a chance they dump it here. Unlikely though. Unlikely because it still gives us the coup. Okay, so they go with coup. So it's a four up coup and they roll pretty well. That's unfortunate. Um, so we're just gonna go straight back at them in Iran and just retake it, I think. Because there's also a decent chance they have NASA here, but um, that's sort of trigger the event. Um, yeah, they're obviously gonna have the choice of when they pull the trigger on that. So no other threes is a bit annoying for us because it makes it a bit harder for us to take Saudi Arabia in one turn. But yeah, I mean, Egypt, by the same token, is a, an annoying one for them to play into, so. Okay, so we'll place three in Iran. Yeah, so our other priorities, obviously, are trying to take Mediterranean countries um, this turn. And Algeria is a, an outside priority. We want to try a new special relationship as soon as possible as well, while UK is uncontrolled. And we do have to be careful of the, the China card. You know, jamming that into North Korea could be annoying. It's just a, a you know, they could take two Mediterranean countries here with it if they really wanted to, I suppose. Although it is a pretty unusual situation as the USSR to be so far ahead in Europe. You know, for them to have no non battleground countries. Oh, interesting. Okay. All right, they went for the UK, fair enough. Um, so we can get our mill ops from Korean War, so we might elect to do that. So let's play Formosa and Resolution in case they play the China card this turn. I think we'll take Turkey. Just so that we're at least threatening. We could pop off the Middle East scoring here. But I think I'm okay with this plan. They've got to run out of high ops cards eventually, surely. I mean, they have played containment, I suppose, but... Oof. Yeah, it's quite funny. Those two red events that they played on turn one... Warsaw Pact and Comic-Con, Suez Crisis is less so, but they're the ones that you definitely want to draw as the US player because that extra influence in Eastern Europe tends to both get degraded as we saw through Truman Doctrine and Eastern European unrest, but also just doesn't really matter that much in the scheme of things. Um, Suez Crisis was a little bit more impactful. You know, they had to actually spend real ops repairing that this turn. So they've got three ops here, two Greece, on Israel, okay, so we'll just snap off the Middle East scoring and say that's fine. Bank those ops. Oh, sorry, those VPs. Um, we might break UK with special relationship here. It's probably the, the way to go. It doesn't get us domination, but it's better than giving them the op in France. And it does give us that, you know, all important access to Canada. That's a joke. Um, okay. So placing one in UK with special relationship, most likely. 
then I think we're going to go other, oh, maybe Algeria with Olympic Games and then Milops from Korean War. So the good thing about if we do win the Korean War, it's only one in three at this point, but if we do win it, um, it does also remove the adjacency from them from North Korea, which is a little bit of a handy thing to have when they have the China card. Interesting. All right. Well, uh, we'll just go into Algeria then. I think that's pretty easy response. Um, so we'll do the Olympic Games now into Algeria. And then we'll do Korean War and we'll just hold over special relationship, I suppose. The other thing is we can leave Korean War in the deck and coup Morocco now because um, they've given us a non-battleground target in Africa, but yeah, I think that's just better to use it for the potential VPs and also, you know, as I said, getting them out of adjacency from North Korea does potentially save us from having to overprotect North Korea at this point. And the likelihood, on the flip side, the likelihood of successfully coup Morocco is very low. And I don't think it's of significant strategic importance at this point. All right, they had CIA, which is good. I mean, we can still redraw it, but I'm glad we didn't get it. Uh, they're going to Mexico, interesting. So we'll just play Korean War. And we failed, but we got the Melops. So we'll see where they poke us. So probably, I imagine it's probably like poke France or something. So I think we've been at a, a reasonably significant ops deficit so far. We've had a couple of fours, but um, we've had three, actually we had three of the five fours. So not bad, but they've, all, they've been all the blue ones. Um, but yeah, just the number of threes that they've had. You all know how much I love threes in the early war. All right, so hopefully they're not holding Deke, hold East style here. Okay. So a defensive China card play, that's interesting. All right, so we've got the Europe scoring. It's still gonna be hard. We've got defectors. Unfortunately, we've got CIA as well. Uh, we've got Marshall Plan, which is a, a bit more of a free play now. Um, do we headline Cambridge 5? Do we headline CNS? Hmm. IP War is not a great play for us, so it'll probably be Ops, just because of how well protected they are in that region. Um, so they do have D-style decal, which is frustrating. Um, so what are we going to do? Probably Kuzaya. They've got NASA as well. There's not really a realistic chance for us with this hand to make inroads in Europe, unfortunately. So it could be headline Europe scoring, but what do we get if they have Middle East or Asia scoring? We don't really get to do much by headlining Cambridge 5. We get to put an op in India. I guess we can take India with the China card. It's not too bad. Yeah, let's, let's do that. I think that's fine. Duck and cover, annoying. So no scoring cards in their hand. All right. So yeah, duck and cover causes us a few problems with uh, CIA created in our hand. Um, So we don't have many options to race for Europe because our ops are just too poor. Uh, we can try the one in sixes in <laughs> India and Pakistan, but 
not loving that as an option. Um, yeah, it's a bit of an awkward one, isn't it? Perhaps we just solidify in the Middle East. Haven't really got particularly good spread options. Saharan States is not a good one. Because we've currently got the access to mill ops and they may not. They're very unlikely to actually. Hmm. So we could just do some spacing this turn, like just get aggressive with space because we've got a one to four. So we can just like space special relationship, then CNS, then space defectors or something and try and get like three ahead on the space race this turn. Um, that's an option. I think we might just do that. So we'll just bank this from Europe scoring see what they do, keep our options open. But I think most likely we'll just do some spacing and then play Marshall Plan. For the ops later in the turn, you know, to take Saudi Arabia, maybe something else. But yeah, we really just don't have many options without the access cards. No, no D style decal. And we've got, you know, so out of D style decal NASA, they're going to have to play one of them this turn. We can only hope that they've redrawn something like um, blockade as well. Which, I mean, they just discard decal, sorry, D style, so it's not all that bad. Uh, what else? I think most of the other red events have actually been resolved at this point. Quite a few red events in the removed pile. We're pretty unfortunate that we redrew that CIO crate. I shouldn't have cursed myself by saying that was possible. It's going to be a bit of a thorn in our side, I think, unless we draw Brezhnev next turn. Or nuclear subs or some such card. There are definitely a few options in the mid war that make it more possible for us to play it. Uh, Jordan, that's a very interesting play. Um, so we might just snap off the Saudi Arabia grab here now then. Uh, one, two, three. Do we go Saharan states? I think they're just gonna coup. They're, like, there's no reason for them to not coup there straight away. So let's just go Israel. And that makes Arab-Israeli war a bad play for them too, if they've redrawn it. That could be why they just played into Jordan, actually, as well. So yeah, let's give them that. I mean, I think at this point, Marshall Plan is about as bad as it can ever be. As a US player, so I'm fine with that. We made them spend a lot of ops in Europe. So yeah, I think uh, uh, as far as the game's balance goes, they have spent an inordinate amount of operations points in non-battleground countries, which is always a good test. You know, that's what I like to see my opponent doing if I can push them into situations where they're spending two in UK, two in Portugal, two in Greece, two in Burma, two in Afghanistan, two in Malaysia, ops all around here. Pretty happy with that, two in Jordan. We've really only placed one in Laos one in Lebanon. I think that's our only non-battleground placement so far, and two in Turkey. So yeah, far less. Uh, and into some strategically more important countries, I think. Uh, so yeah, I'm pretty happy with that. The way that our tempo has played out. We just haven't quite had the power cards to ram home the advantage yet. But not upset with where we're sitting on the board right now. Sokov, again, about as bad as it gets for us right now. Um, so what do we take? I think we'll take two from UK, one from Canada maybe. No, I think it's got to be two from West Germany. Just because of Willy Brandt in the mid-war, we can be a bit more annoying with that. 
um, and maybe the one from Canada gets them just further away from that because I don't think taking one from Portugal, Greece or UK is going to be relevant. It's a great photo on socialist governments, isn't it? I don't actually know where that photo is from, but it's a uh, quite powerful photograph. Um, so who is next most likely? Five cards in hand, D style, D Cole, NASA, and two unknowns at this stage, I think. Oh, Romanian abdication, we haven't seen. So NASA, decal, D style, Romanian, one other, which you may know, but I can't think at the moment what it is. Uh, so they go into Egypt. Interesting, since they're gonna be playing NASA. It could be, Ar I'm getting strong Arab-Israeli war vibes is their fifth card. And given they've just played into Egypt again, as well as Jordan. Uh, so I think we'll just start off on our space train here. They're not really, doing much so hopefully we succeed on that one very good now we can auto succeed on the next one with the cns and then we can space defectors to go to man in earth orbit which if we can then get to eagle bear has landed in the next couple of turns that'd be really strong we really don't want them to get to animal in space next turn so we'll play cns space defectors and then we'll IP war. So D style NASA Romanian. And one other. Arab Israeli war, strong suspect. So thinking ahead to next turn, then priorities are to try and take some more of these African battlegrounds. Oh, it's blockade, okay. So discarding the D-style, placing into Syria, interesting. A lot of Middle East focus from them here. Uh, we'll space the defectors, come on, ah. Did really want that. Getting that far ahead in the space race track in the early world would have been really nice. All right, so now with the one in six on the IP war, there's the Romanian. Realignment on Cuba, fair enough. Uh, and then we'll play IP war on India to four, but at least we get the two mil ops VPs. And there's the NASA. Playing into Sudan for the domination, fair enough. All right, so lots of options here. I don't think we want to be raising DEFCON to five with salt in the headline phase, even though well, this would be not bad to get back D-style actually. Raise DEFCON to five, get back D-style, coup one of these two. Yeah, I don't, I don't hate it, I don't hate it. Look at other options. Um, we've got a couple of spaces this turn, which is gonna be handy for these dreadful cards to get them out of our hand. But if we can use this, the, I mean, the other option is headline quagmire, of course. Um, so we had to defect on turn three, didn't we? Yeah, so defect, where defect is free. Um, So 
so we can headline Quagmire like quote unquote for free in the sense that we can then still do the salt play and they might get stuck in the Quagmire. Um, but I think I kind of prefer salt because it also lets us get rid of the CIA from our hand. That's not too bad. Hmm. So we go salt, get back D style. Coup. Yeah, I think it's probably still right to start with Quagmire, then go salt AR1. Yeah, let's do that. Oof, all right. Hunter is a powerful one for sure. Looks like Argentina, Rayline, Cuba. Did they coup? They did coup. Interesting. That's actually better for us. So we go this and get back this. I think it's still better than decal at this point. Yeah, we've got, we've got to get into South America. Now, if they fail one, then we get two coups, which is pretty good. Although, actually, we're going to play CIA either way. So I think we're just going to go play CIA now, like resolve the event first, and then coup. And if they coup, uh, all right, they go to we'll bury you. Fair enough. At least that hopefully makes it less likely they space this turn too, because we're definitely going to get double space this turn. So let's go trigger this. We just don't want to hold CIA through the whole mid-war. It's not a recipe for success. And getting rid of some of these this turn is going to make our mid-war so much better. So we have to remember to space colonial rearguards first, because otherwise we run out of two ops space spots. All right, so we get to have a coup at minus one on Zaya. All right, not the greatest roll, but that's all right. You know, we could have made sure of it, um, but I'm okay with how it worked out. So our next AR is going to be D style. Um, out of Europe and into South America. We can go into Nigeria as well. So that's going to be good. Just give us a little bit of buffer there. The other thing is with Shay in hand, we can more aggressively go into Saharan States, Nicaragua, Haiti, all these places. But I think we just want to use our Shay for ops to spread in South America. So let's see, opponent event, all right. Oh, we got it. Ugh, that's rough for them. We can definitely take the initiative in the Middle East now, which is nice. Did they go two back into Israel? No, they go Zaire, Egypt. Okay. I mean, Nas is out, um, uh, Sadat is out there, so I don't really see the advantage to all of that Egypt nonsense. Uh, one, two, three, four. No, actually, that's not right. It is one, two, three, four. Um, then we go one, two, three, four. And look, if they respond to our D style with the voice of America, so be it. There is not much we can do about that. So Flower Power and Shay are our ops. Rear guards and then 
Isuri, I think, gets spaced. Or Bear Trap. Hmm. Maybe Bear Trap. I think I would rather not end up getting <laughs> Missile Envied <laughs> into the Bear Trap again. Africa scoring out for free. That's good. Lucky we evened that up, that action round. Um, oh, sh did the wrong thing. Glad that that has a confirm. Uh, so one, two in Chile, three, four. Uh, is it better to go to Venezuela? I think it is actually. I mean, if they had VOA, they would play it anyway, though that's the counter argument. Uh, one, two. Yeah. No, I'm just gonna, I'm, I'm too, uh, they could be big braining us with a, a Voice of America here. I'm just gonna do that. <clears throat> um, oh, actually, I think the actual gigantic brain play is to do this because then we can go one Brazil, one Uruguay next turn. And we've got Shea back up um, if they try and coo us out of Uruguay here. That we can coo, we get two coups, like we go to Sudan, Uruguay. Central America, okay. More scoring cards coming out. Uh, so we'll place in Uruguay, Brazil, and I think Israel or Venezuela. No, it's Venezuela to overprotect from the Voice of America. I think that's where we want to go. Yeah. And then they probably know that we're going space, space here now. But this is a, a good turn for us, you know, getting solid result in South America. And they do have to be careful here not to get realigned out of Argentina. So Paraguay is a juicy target for them. Um, it's adjacent to an Angola. So this hand was rough for them. Definitely, that is a rough US hand. Two scoring cards that they couldn't use profitably and a limited number of ops, most of which are red cards. So they do take Paraguay, which we don't mind. We weren't particularly minded to get them out of Argentina anyway. We'll space the rear guards. Fairly annoying. So a couple of space rolls, not quite working out as we want, but hopefully we can get there this turn with the bear trap and then space the Usuri next turn. Mid East scoring is four for us and we'll space the bear trap. All right, we got there. So if we can get two more space spots next turn, will be in an amazing position. Asia scoring is even now, it's one for them. Okay. What have we got? Red scare could be devastating for them potentially. We've got VOA, which we now can't space unless we get a, a cheeky Brezhnev doctrine. Uh, so we're gonna have to hope that we get the double space off this turn. Uh, so if we go red scare, we can go uh, one small step coup. We can also go UN intervention, Voice of America. That's not bad. Didn't even see that. Yeah, so I think it's got to be Red Scare Purge in the headline phase, and then coup either Zaire or Argentina. So Argentina is better because it's unscored. Uh, it's just about higher chance of success in Zaire, and it does let us coup with a two op more easily, um, and then take the arms race VPs which is a, a nice little three VPs, I think, at this point, given we're on 13. Because that way, if we do succeed on three VPs on one of our space rolls, um, it takes up to 19, which is pretty strong. We haven't got a random other VP in our hand, do we? No, but you never know. Willie Brandt could be in their hand or something like that. And it might be a mandatory play with red scare. Hmm. So 
the Middle East, Asia, Europe, Central and Africa are out. So we're just looking at South America at this point. Uh, Count David Accords. Okay. Well, there goes our aiming for a VP victory this turn, I think. Uh, unless they have a two VP card for us, which there aren't that many. Um, other than South America scoring. Um, so we're definitely wanting to UN Intervention coup. Uh, sorry, UN Intervention Voice of America. The question is what we coup with. So we can coup with EU. Uh, but we're kind of in this situation, one, two, three, four, five, like we're, we're only, we're even on country count um, in Europe, which means that if we get the Europe scoring card, we might not want to lose influence to EEU here. Um, so it's like coup Argentina with EEU or, I just don't think, I think if we, if South America scoring comes out, we're, we're probably okay. So I think we're just, coup Zaire is fine. Um, so let's do an intervention, Voice of America, Zaya. Yeah. Well, one's not ideal, but we're in decent shape. Because they're now under pressure to get Milops this turn. Which is kind of bad for us because they might try and coup here, like coup Uruguay or something. Oh, nah, that would be bad. They have to play into Zaya. And then we just get to go arms race, so that's not too bad. So Kuzaya, Arms Race, we space twice, and then we've got some random plays for the rest of the turn. We space at least once. They might, of course, go to space in between, so we're spacing Yasuri first. Okay, NATO for influence. One Zaya, two Canada. Okay, uh, Arms Race will take the VPs. Okay, they want no rad. Interesting. Uh, we'll space Usuri. Ah, really want those VPs. Now, please don't space and take away my space roll. I'm going to be real annoyed if that happens. Ah, please fail, please fail, please fail, please fail. Ah! <laughs> oh, damn it. All right. Um... So we don't want to give them good non-battleground targets, which kind of makes things a bit awkward. Um, we can just like pound Argentina with rear lines for the rest of the turn if we want to, but I, I'm not particularly enamored of that. <clears throat> Pardon me. I think taking South Africa, for example, is probably better um, rather than trying to set up some rear line on Zaya. So let's just place two in South Africa and see where we go. So we'll see what they've got, they've got at the back end of the turn. <clears throat> Pardon me, under purge. It's going to be hard for them to set up any more particularly, you know, strong no-rad targets. You know, no-rad now with Quagmire out of the way, definitely a, a problem for us. Uh, oh, well, this is a, a good way to make use of no-rad. Success there. I get to place... One. So lucky we overprotected Venezuela. Place one in South Korea. Fair enough, as expected. Uh, we're not going to play Aman in Tehran here if we can avoid it. Can we avoid it? No. We have to play China card to avoid it. Ugh, that's annoying. I just know South America scoring is going to be the top five cards. Um, all right, let's trigger this. They've taken Canada now anyway, so I think the, the European domination plan is pretty much over. Cool, so we'll go to Venezuela, one South Korea. They might have South America scoring here and it might just all be over. But, um, I dare say they did that more for the VPs than the, the Milops rather than anything else.
Yeah, so I think the lone gunman influence probably just goes into South Africa here. Oh wow, okay. That's interesting. Um, it's a good roll. Uh, let's go one in Colombia. Looks like they might have South America scoring if they were one up cooing Uruguay. That's my tip. So if they coup here and succeed, we can just retake Uruguay. So it puts us in an okay spot. They can take two countries, I suppose. Are they, yep, cooing Colombia. Success, so we'll place here. I guess actually we should resolve the event first and if they discard South America scoring, we might reevaluate. <clears throat> but I think they have South America scoring in hand, judging by their plays or their they think we do, but we would have just played it earlier in the turn. We've had plenty of action rounds and we've been at 15. Okay, there goes A and D. And do they have it? Looks like probably not, if they're taking this long to think about it. Sadat, so okay, fair enough. No South America scoring. So, uh, brush war is nice. Uh, ask not can go to space. Kitchen debates is a free play. OAS will hold onto potentially. Uh, liberation theology is nice. How I learned could potentially get us some VPs at the end of the turn, depending on how things go. So I think we're probably liberation theology headline into a Cuban missile crisis coup. That's probably where we're at. Panama Canal returned. Okay. Hmm. <laughs> so actually we might give them the coup then. Do we give them the coup? Uh, and just fix Venezuela and take Mexico, for example. Um, that's an option. So we headline liberation theology. I guess the other option is to just headline Cuban Missile Crisis and then play Liberation Theology later in the turn. Nobody gets a coup. I think that's probably fine. So we headline Cuban Missile Crisis. We use Olympic Games for Ops to repair Venezuela. Yeah. That's not bad, and then it makes it harder for them to coup, which makes it more likely that How I Learned does some good stuff for us too. Yeah, I like that. Okay, so we Olympic Games, one Venezuela, one South Africa. Yeah. And then I think we liberation theology to Mexico, one Guatemala, maybe. Uh, or one Nicaragua, I can see as well. We are kind of inviting coups by doing that though. So I think we'll do that later in the turn if we think that, I know that if they coup, they have to take two out of West Germany, but 
Or maybe we do it earlier so that we do actually still have the ops to fight for West Germany if we wanted to. And what are we going to brush war? I'm not going to brush war Italy. Best target might be Zaire. Argentina is obviously a juicy target too. Right, going for the hand size reduction again, fair enough. Hit a pretty good one. Some of our playable ops, that's annoying. Uh, maybe we go to space here just to see if we get those VPs. Ah, come on. Really playing with me here. Those three VPs would be very handy. So I'm probably gonna brush war second to last action round. This is annoying because it means that we have to play this stupid OAS founded. Um, I still think we probably do that later in the turn though, because again, if they've got South America scoring, it's a big problem for them. We don't actually have to play Brush War as the other thing. We can use it for Ops here, uh, but it's a pretty good card not to, to play. The only reason I'm thinking that is that we get Mill Ops from How I Learned anyway, if we're to event that and try and get the VPs from it. Okay, taking the China card, fair enough. Trying to beat us with Defcon, I guess. Um, Hmm. Let's just play this, I think. One, two, three. See what they want to do. Nuclear subs, repair Mexico. Fair enough. Uh, kitchen debates. Where's that going to go? Israel, probably. Let's go with that. I think we'll play Brush War for the event. I guess we could have queued Colombia up there and then. Um, Tried to brush wall Panama. JP for the event, fair enough. We'll use, mm, this is actually annoying. This is what we get for holding OAS till later in the turn, I suppose. Um, the annoying thing about the How I Learned ploy is that they do just get to respond with a if they've got a high ops card, a high op coup, and just remove from West Germany to save themselves. But um, yeah, is that worth it? Is it worth it to try and just get the VPs from How I Learned and give up some tempo in South America here? It probably is okay. Let's just trigger this, see what happens. Do they go one Venezuela, one Brazil, or if they go both in Brazil? Yeah, okay, one Venezuela, one Brazil. Um, well, I think we just repair Venezuela. If they jam into Brazil, we can brush war it and we'll just leave Poland hanging for now. I think that's the best way to go. <laughs> yeah, okay. Um, very annoying. Sue. So, we can just brush War Zaire here. I think we do. Action round six. Yeah, brush War Zaire. Oh man, really? 
Ah, God, uh, everything is just so annoying. Really irritating me right now. Um, all right, DEFCON 5, here we go. What have we got? If they've got like a four up and they coup Thailand here, I'm gonna be very annoyed. Yeah, three up coup, that's also pretty annoying. Rolled well, so we just get the two VPs. One VP? Ah, oh, Defcon degraded, of course. Only the one VP. Boo. Um, oh, man. Now this is a crappy hand as well. So maybe we'll Culture Revolution take back the China card and then Space AR1. Ah, Space AR1 seems so bad. Uh, Missile Envy, okay. Ah, Nuclear Test Ban, perfect. GG, I didn't even notice that. <laughs> Who's ever headlined nuclear test ban? There you go. What a combo. Well, GG, thanks for watching. Um, thankfully, they uh, headlined Missile Envy and I didn't just snap headline Culture Revolution. I would have definitely regretted that. Um, yeah, how I learned into nuclear test ban. There you go. Uh, what well played to our opponents? Um, nice to finally get another win on the board. Frustrating South America scoring <laughs> two games in a row is doing my head in. Um, came out at all the wrong times, but there you go. That worked out all right in the end. Got there with the test band BPs. And despite all my efforts on the space race track, I only got up to main earth orbit. Um, but yeah, good to walk away with the win and we'll see you next time. Thanks for watching.